Welcome to Firewall Management 201. I'm Professor Wall and today we're going to be talking about the challenges of managing the security of your routers. So you may be wondering why are we talking about routers in a firewall class? Well, routers are firewalls. Every modern router has filtering capabilities and it's able to filter traffic just like a firewall using what are known as access control lists or ACLs. Each of those is a rule base. Uh, the difference is that routers often have much inferior management systems to control and manage all of these policies. So where are you using your, your routers to filter traffic? There are several scenarios you can have in mind. The first is if you have many remote offices, like different stores, maybe each one of those remote locations has a router that is filtering traffic and protecting the network inside the remote office or the store. So those routers are functioning as your firewalls. If you look inside corporate headquarters, which is zoomed in over here on the right, you can see that behind the corporate firewall there are many, many routers that are segregating different parts of the network and separating them from each other. So you have different business units and business uh, uh, functions that need to communicate and those routers are enforcing the policy allowing or blocking traffic from various points to various other points. With this in mind, now think about what you need to do when you're introducing a new security change. You need to now allow traffic from point A to point B and it has to go through the network. So obviously you need to make changes to the firewall over here protecting that resource, but you also need to look at the routers along the path. You need to find them to discover which routers are relevant, and then you need to make sure that the traffic from between points A and B is allowed. So when you're making a change to the security policy and you're touching these routers, you really need to do two things. You need to modify or check their routing just to make sure that traffic actually is sent from the first router to the second router to the firewall to the device you need to reach. So you need to make sure that the routing is done correctly. And then you need to make sure that the access lists on these devices, over here and over here and of course on this firewall, are allowing the traffic that you need to allow. If you don't make the changes in the firewall and also in the routers, traffic will not get through. So you need to identify and correct both the routing and the security policy. This goes the other way as well. Imagine somebody makes a change, an unauthorized change to one of these devices, either to the routing policy or to the security policy in the ACLs on these devices, you will have a network outage. So you need to have control over these devices from a security perspective, both on the routing and on the ACLs, to have a good control over your network in general. And the final aspect of this is that since these routers, these filtering routers are part of your security infrastructure, they are subject to audit. So if you have a PCI audit, these devices that protect your stores are part of the PCI audit because they are protecting your areas where you're storing credit card information. So you need to be able to control them and demonstrate to the auditor that you are monitoring them properly. So what is the takeaway from all of this? You need to remember that your routers are also firewalls. You need to, and, and you need to treat them that way. You need to monitor them for changes. You need to consider them when you're making security changes to the network. And you need to audit them properly. And finally, sometimes these routers become very bloated in terms of policy. They have thousands of access lists on them and they become difficult to manage and slow things down and it might be a good idea to clean them up occasionally and get rid of the clutter. That's what we have today. Thank you for your attention.